I'm Jenny. And I'm Eric. Welcome to Maja Center, an institute dedicated to exploring the close connection between reason and faith. There are some hot button issues in society right now, and Maja Center wants to bring them to light. Among these issues are things like faith in science and the existence of God. Another is happiness. Think about it. Happiness. What does it mean to you? Have you ever wondered why you or others sometimes feel unhappy? Why do some people who seem to have everything also seem to be unhappy? And what is it that actually makes us happy? Have you ever wondered why there is so much suffering in the world? Or why God, who is supposed to be this loving entity, would allow suffering? Is there a benefit to suffering? Why do some people get through their suffering better than others? Can and do we benefit from suffering? Is there a way of suffering well? Have you ever wondered if you have a soul? Or if there is any evidence, especially scientific evidence, of a life beyond this world? Is eternal life just wishful thinking? Is God just a crutch for weak-minded people? Or are there good reasons for believing in a soul, eternal life, and even a loving God? These are some of the questions we'll be addressing in this series. We plan on interviewing some of the world's greatest experts in the areas of happiness, purpose in life, near-death experiences, the historical evidence for Jesus, and how to bring good out of evil, suffering, and depression. I think this will be one of the most important programs you'll ever study. Virtually every philosopher, from Plato and Aristotle to great contemporary scientists such as Albert Einstein, believed that the key to a good life included four things. Happiness, suffering, love, and God. In today's episode, we'll take a look at the four levels of happiness. But we'd better begin with why happiness is so important. Beginning with Plato and Aristotle back in 400 BC, there is almost unanimous agreement among philosophers that happiness is one of the most important ideas we can reflect on in our lives. Aristotle even said, happiness is the one thing you can choose for itself. Everything else is chosen for the sake of happiness. Aristotle and practically every other philosopher and psychologist since him realized that our view of happiness shapes what we strive for, the friendships we make, the careers we pursue, the person we marry, and the legacy we leave. Our view of happiness also determines whether we believe ourselves to be happy or unhappy, successful or unsuccessful, superior or inferior, worth something or worthless, going somewhere or going nowhere, a winner or a loser. So you can see that any course of study that does not consider happiness would be an incomplete course. But one that considers it will do some tremendous good. Let's get started. To save you from reading countless books on philosophy, psychology, anthropology, and theology, a group of philosophers at Maja Center put together a summary of what the world's greatest thinkers wrote about happiness. They looked at where these philosophers' thoughts overlapped and then assembled the essential elements into a system called the Four Levels of Happiness. This program was led by Father Robert J. Spitzer, who was president of Gonzaga University for 11 years, taught at Georgetown University, has written several books, and even speaks worldwide on the subject of happiness. We interviewed Father Spitzer and asked him some questions about happiness. Let's go to that now. Happiness is the one thing you can choose in and for itself. Everything else is chosen for the sake of happiness, said Aristotle. I think he was right, because this one term can determine, well, every decision that you make in your life, what you're going to pursue as your career, the kinds of friends that you're, you're, you're going to uh, pursue. Also, whether you think your life is a success or not, whether you're worth something or not, this one little term determines just about every major decision in your life, so we really want to be clear on it. Now, in Latin, there are four terms for happiness, and, and that's a good thing because um, uh, th th those different notions of happiness will affect our lives so very differently. Uh, we have litus, we have uh, phalix, beatus, and, and, and sublimitas, but 
in, in English, there's just one word, happiness. And so, of course, you can see why there's so much confusion in our cultures about, well, why are we happy? Why are we unhappy? But let's just go through these four levels for just a second, and you can get a sense of them. The most superficial one, lie to us, well, that's the kind of happiness that comes from some kind of stimulus from outside of ourselves, a, a big bowl of ice cream. And then there's a second kind of happiness, and, and it's called Felix in, in Latin, and that's the kind of happiness that comes from ego gratification. And then the third kind of happiness, let's call it Beatus in Latin, that's the kind of happiness that comes from a completely opposite point of view. It's the kind of happiness that comes from making a positive difference to the world around me. And the fourth kind of happiness, sublimitas, like the sublime, that's the kind of happiness that comes from satisfying our ultimate desires. And you could see, among the various differences in these kinds of happiness, we better be pretty clear about which one is most important to us, because it's going to determine how we live our whole lives. <laughs>